And welcome guys, let's get right into it. My name is Vedran Popovic. I'm one of the counselors at Sasha Reese Academy and today we're going to be looking at bathing 101, how to bathe your dog at home or in a professional setting. Today we have with us our little Quincy. He's a doodle, par poodle, par art, Aussie shepherd. So his coat is going to be a wool texture like coat that's very easily tangled if not maintained on a regular basis either at the groomers or at home with regular bathing. So what we're doing first is we're going to wet the coat, make sure that every single part of the dog is wet. We're going to be using lukewarm water, not too cold, not too hot, room temperature. Keep in mind the dog's body is slightly warmer than humans so whatever feels hot to us is going to feel even hotter to them so we're just making sure everything is nice and wet the tail the entire body and he's gonna really enjoy this process here this dog is on a regular schedule whatever regular means um, he comes in every four weeks or every two weeks depending on how often the owner wants their dog groomed so it's all depending on the lifestyle so the more questions we ask the more we are able to connect with our clients the better we understand the relationship they have with their dogs the more regular they're going to come and see us and the more they like us the more loyal they are to us the easier our job will be and the more the dogs will enjoy the entire process so as you can see this dog is very very well behaved he's just resting his head completely on my palm he's ready to go to sleep there's no signs of fear or anxiety everyone who knows dog psychology everybody who's in tune with how dogs behave they're going to be able to see that this dog has virtually no anxiety virtually no fear whatsoever And as we all know, grooming is all about the well-being and the comfort of the dog. There shouldn't be any fear, any anxiety, or anything that makes the process unpleasant for the dog, for yourself, and for the client. So once the dog is very nice and wetted down, you can go ahead and apply your shampoo. We're always going to do two-time shampooing. So the first shampooing is all about getting any dust and dirt off the coat and then the second shampooing is going to be the one that deeply penetrates down to the skin and really opens up the hair follicle the cuticle which is going to allow the conditioner to deeply penetrate the skin and to replenish the hair follicles so as you're seeing it's already starting to get a nice rich lather and this is only the first shampooing so this has a lot to do with the quality of your tap water that you're using we're in fairfield iowa and the pH is around 7.5 if I'm not mistaken. So it all has to do with the water quality. But most often you're going to get a nice result. So here I'm just adding a little more water just to kind of get rid of some of that thickness. And just to allow the shampoo to do its job. So if you're looking at the dog you can see that he's relaxed. He's allowing me to bathe the back of his legs when you're lifting the dog's leg always try to simulate the same as if the dog is going up to a fire hydrant so they're lifting their leg and then opening it up so you never want to tug and pull it you always want to raise the leg and then push it slightly away from the body you never want to have the ligaments stretched out and pulled up because that's not how the dog's anatomy is structured so to have a good foundation and an understanding of the bones the dog anatomy is really important when you're doing this type of job professionally because you want to you know make sure the dog is comfortable at all times and you want to have a great understanding and a uh, great sense of safety and you always want to have that in mind of what the dog's body can and cannot do and you don't want to ever go you know beyond those limits so here the dog is you know again relaxed his he's looking out in from the tub 
Here I'm going to add extra shampoo. You want to make sure that the head is very clean. You can clean in and around the ears. There's a lot of myths going on it. You know, it's dangerous to get water inside the ears, which is, you know, completely not factual. Um, if the ears are healthy, you can shampoo them, you can wash them, and there's nothing that can go wrong with that. The only time there's issues with that is if, there's too much hair built up and then you don't wash out the dirt and then it becomes a breeding ground for bacteria. But this dog is very clean, so there's no need to shampoo the inside of the ears. We're just going to get rid of any grease that's on the outside and make sure that the face is very nice and clean around the eyes. The shampoo, Sasha Reese Pure Love, is hypoallergenic, tearless, puppy friendly, no harsh chemicals, no parabens, no fragrances or syn synthetic dyes and detergents or perfumes. So it's safe, it's gentle to use. You can do it around the eyes. You can use it as much as you need to, as often as you need to. It all depends on your lifestyle and how you live with the dog. It's going to be much different for someone who has a farm dog that lives outside versus someone who shares the bed and the pillow with the dog. In cases like that, you want to keep the dog as clean as possible. You want to have a nice, beautiful, clean house. And the only way to achieve that is to bathe the dog on a regular basis. So once everything is nice and lathered up and shampooed, I'm going to go ahead and rinse everything out. And when you're doing it around the face you want to make sure that the water is slightly turned down you don't want to have a gushing water coming into the dog again this dog is very relaxed so he doesn't mind anything he knows that i'm gonna make sure no water gets into his nose so this is the, the second shampoo and you see here how it's already starting to right away as soon as you start massaging the dog there's a nice thick shampoo that's being generated so you want to make sure the tail is nice and clean Get as deep as you can and give the dog a nice relaxing shampooing massage and again if you notice the dog he's completely relaxed there's no signs of fear anxiety or any discomfort grooming is all about conditioning teaching the dog to love the entire process from beginning to end there should never be any fear of any anxiety when it comes to grooming if there are cases like that, there is the Doggy Mom and Doggy Dad Academy, which dives deeper into any type of behavior challenges related to anxiety. And there's concrete and easy steps that can be implemented to heal the dog and to teach them that there is nothing to be scared of. So now... I have everything nicely shampooed. I'm just going to make sure that everything around the face, around the ears, the front, the back, all the legs are nicely lathered up. And of course, the tail is squeaky clean. You can keep adding a little bit of water to get a deeper lather. So here again, always test the water. To make sure that it hasn't fluctuated in temperature while you were doing something else. And once it's comfortable, you can go ahead and keep massaging the dog. The cleaner the dog, the better finish you're going to have. So it's all about having a nice, clean coat. It's going to make the drying and the brushing process effortless. The cleaner the dog, the better result you're going to have. Your grooming is going to be outstanding. And you're going to have a great finish. The Both the shampoo and the conditioner is fast dry technology. So the cleaner the dog, the faster it's going to dry and the faster and easier time you're going to have with brushing and blowing out the coat so all you want to do is maximize your results by using the least amount of effort necessary so the first time you're shampooing you don't have to completely rinse out the product but once you are done with the second shampooing you want to make sure that you get any excess product off the skin off the coat once you are able to get all the product out you're gonna give a chance for the conditioner to get deeply absorbed by the skin it's going to penetrate the skin and give it that really nice and healthy look also the hair follicles and the cuticles are going to be able to absorb 
all the essential nutrients that the conditioner offers. So here I put the conditioner inside of a dog water bowl just so you can see how much I'm using. There is approximately half a cup, maybe a little more. So for this type of woolly coat, you really want to use a lot of conditioner and how much is a lot. Um, it just depends. You want to keep applying it to the dog's skin. And as you're noticing that the skin and the coat is absorbing it, once it's no longer absorbing it, that's when you know you have enough. So I would say a half a cup is enough, but it all depends on how often the dog has been bathed in the past, the condition of the skin, is there any tangles, is it smooth, is it curly? So there's a lot of factors that go into that. You want to use conditioner for all dogs. It doesn't matter the coat type. It doesn't matter if it's long or short or coarse. It's not going to make a difference. You really want to do that for the skin health. And then when the skin is healthy, the coat is going to gravitate toward, toward, towards its optimal natural state whatever the natural state of the coat is so that means silky coats are going to be silky and straight rough coats are going to be rough and coarse curly is going to be curly and so on and so forth so as you can see here i'm using a lot of conditioner i'm really massaging it in i'm giving the dog a chance to i'm giving the skin and the coat a, a chance to absorb all of that so there's about two handfuls of conditioner that are going on on top of what i've already used around the ears inside of the ears around the face again both sasha Rista shampoo and conditioner are hypoallergenic and puppy safe tearless so you can use it as much as you need to depending on your lifestyle there's no wrong no right way of doing it it's all about your lifestyle and what makes you happy so here i'm just watching the time i'm gonna give the product maybe five minutes or so to absorb the longer you leave it the better it is for the the coat and the skin so if your dog is patient as you can see this dog is just you know calmly looking around He's very calm. He's not trying to escape. If you're doing this with um, your client's dog, you always, always want to have a hand on the dog just to prevent any potential injuries. But we've worked with this dog so much that he virtually is sitting in the tub ready to fall asleep because of all the essential oils that are in the shampoo and the conditioner, lavender, jojoba, aloe vera, panthenol, and most importantly, spring water from the ancient Pannonian Sea, which is ultra rich in antioxidants and minerals that only nature can provide. So essentially, it's all about the water. This type of water you can only source from ancient springs that are buried thousands and thousands of miles below the crust of the earth so here i'm adding more water to kind of loosen everything up to reactivate the conditioner to make it less thick to give it a chance to go deeper into the skin and to just be absorbed you can also use the conditioner for a deep conditioning treatment if you want to fill up a tub with water and conditioner and soak your dog that way this is great for any maltese cotons or have any dogs that have a full coat that you want to just be able to brush out effortlessly you want to do a deep soak you can also leave a tiny layer of conditioner in if you want to have a really easy time of brushing it out but it's not necessary if the dog is clean and here I'm all done. So this took about 14 minutes. If you were able to muscle through this whole video, thank you so much. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe and leave all your comments below. We'll try to respond to all of them. And thank you so much for watching and see you next time.